Now we're recording. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I'm Sarah Black. I'm Theo Black. And uh, we are on week three of rom-coms, which, uh, let me tell you, has been a mixed bag. Um, I'm going I'm... <laughs> to... I know, I was going to say, you have to talk about one of the rom-coms we, <laughs> we watched, because I, I feel like you don't want to talk about either, for, for very different reasons. <laughs> for very different reasons. I have things to say about Adam's Rib. I don't really... Okay, so the first movie we're going to talk about is Neptune's Daughter. <laughs> which for the life of me I, I i was watching it and i was like oh this is really rough and i i had to work through the movies this week because i've got a lot of stuff going on at work but i was paying attention even paying attention i don't remember most of this movie i watched it <laughs> not even a week ago and i don't remember most of this movie it was so okay so you're heads gonna, up, you're we're gonna... gonna give wild spoilers for the classic and much loved neptune's daughter okay so i picked neptune's daughter for us to watch i picked the movies we watched this month because we have long, um, Esther Williams is a legend in our family because she is part of a Monty Python joke where they do charades in a courtroom and they've already gotten the clue not, which you think for the verdict, which you think would be enough for them to, you know, guess the rest of the verdict. I mean, when they said that it was two words, you have enough for the verdict, but that's fine. And, and someone's mining like a fit, miming like fish for Gil. Um, but they guess Esther Williams and the beloved Graham Chapman said, that's silly. How can you find someone not Esther Williams? And so, you know, we had to know who she was. Um, and I, and um, But I've never actually seen anything of hers. And so who Esther Williams was, was a competitive swimmer and actress. And she was in these films in the 40s and 50s known as aqua musicals and that's kind of all I really know about her to be honest but I've been curious because like when else have we I mean we these stars pop up from time to time where they're like famous for something else but they you know Audie Murphy like <laughs> in a way you know right. like these um there's Jim Cotta has I think his name is Kirk Thomas and it like they, they, they'll take an athlete they'll take someone who's famous in some other way and and have them you know in movies so I mean, i've been the, the rock is, is our, our current right. like example that's a very that. good good example so i was curious about her and i think i picked neptune's daughter because it said it was actually romantic and it was from the right time period it's from 1949 so i looked esther williams up recently and i can't remember why i think she was referenced in a movie but i don't remember and i was like well i only really know her from the monty python thing because as a younger person I think I've seen every season of Monty Python because you owned every season of Monty, Monty yeah. Python. Flying Circus, so, their TV show. Flying Circus, the TV show. And I've seen two of the movies. I think there's only two or maybe there's a third one. I forget. I think there's a third one. There's um, Life of Brian. There's... Um, I've seen Life of Brian and I've seen Holy Grail, but I haven't seen whatever that... I think there's a third one or something. Anyway, let's... Anyways, this is off, talk, off point here, but... <laughs> What I'm saying is that, so Monty Python was a big thing growing up, which means we quoted it constantly, including, how can you find something not Esther Williams? Right. Um, and so that, and I looked her up recently and I'm like, well, I was curious to see an Esther Williams movie. The other thing is Esther Williams, like in the background of a lot of movies, especially certain period pieces, whether that's, I mean, whether that's, you know, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, whatever, I mean, whatever decade we're talking about, movie people making movies love to throw movie posters up in the background mm -hmm. like it's just what you do if they're in in walking down the street in in whatever city in whatever era you throw it up in the background like uh the last picture show i think you know has some posters in it that i should probably look up what they actually are but mm -hmm. like it's just that thing where, and it's like i've seen things in the background where it's like starring esther williams in fact i watch japanese been watching a few of the japanese noirs and i've been watching right you sent me that screen cap there was an esther williams poster in the background right so it's like it's not the thing is foreign cinema has always been big but bigger than foreign cinema probably is american cinema being exported so right. like in the background of a, of a movie from the 50s in china you're gonna find well maybe not china i don't know china is a little different they're a little more how they do that but you're still gonna find these posters in japan and france and germany whatever so like esther williams is a name that just kind of shows up 
Yeah. And so now we and we sat down to watch Neptune's Daughter, and you are gonna you're gonna start talking about this and how much you love it. And I have to let the people know this movie is terrible. It's awful. <laughs> it is so bad. It's, it's 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 problematic in ways that are that are less. Okay, easy but to okay. And uh, hold on here. <laughs> I was expecting it to be kind of kitschy, weird late 40s early 50s stuff and it is but what i didn't realize is that it's also like it's also exactly what it is okay so do you want to summarize neptune's daughter or do you want to do the next movie uh, you can do this one <laughs> thank you um for reasons <laughs> that don't really make any sense to me at all esther williams and her sister go somewhere where the south american polo team is also um i don't South America is is treated like a country in this movie. I know in sports you can have continents compete against one another from time to time. I feel like that I, happened, but it's it's, it's usually it's, countries and not continents. But I do yeah. think there is occasionally like an exhibition match, or, or it's something. like a certain know. yeah. Anyway, it, it's I mean this should give you an idea of what we're dealing with here. Um, Esther Williams' character's sister, played by um, Betty Garrett, and I think that's like her character's name also, um, falls in love with what she thinks is Jose O'Rourke, one of the polo players, but is actually Red Skelton, um, Jack Spratt, pretending to be Jose O'Rourke. Um, and then in her attempts to protect her sister, Esther Williams ends up with the real Jose O'Rourke, who kind of takes this all in stride. Wacky hijinks ensue, offensive stereotypes of South Americans ensue, um, and there's very little swimming, which I found quite disappointing. And that's kind of it. You, you, you are leaving out the fact that she, Esther Williams, Eve Barrett, is the character <laughs> name, is like a top person like designer of swimsuit wear at a company yeah and it doesn't yeah. really matter to her though because she's willing to give it up in an instant <laughs> yeah that's that, that that reminded me of cover girl kind of yeah Anyways. so i know you want to and and this film totally deserves it i know you want to shit all over it but do you want me to go into what I found fascinating by the, about you, this movie. You probably first. should, just so we don't alienate anyone right off the bat. <laughs> Go into why you like this. Okay, so I was expecting, like, kitschy movie from the late 40s. But what I actually got is something that we're more familiar with. It's a movie that's kind of cold-heartedly trying to make money. It's a little bit of a gimmick to begin with. You've got Esther Williams. So you think about something like Jim Cotta, where you have Kirk Thomas. Like, you have... You have this person you're hoping will draw in a certain audience. Um, and then you've got like, you've got her for as little as you can. And then you fill in the space with like nonsense. And in and, and that way, it reminds me of like mostly 90s movies where you see that kind of thing where it's like, here's this one name star and then all these other things going on. It also weirdly reminded me of like a television variety show um, because it was like a series of weird different things that were all in a movie together. Um, Eve Barrett played by Esther Williams, as you said, her, her business partner is in another movie that's occurring within this movie where he is having noir voiceovers really that, that's not tonally matching the kind of bright technicolor look of the movie there's a whole segment with um xavier kugat's band that just seems to happen um red skelton and betty garrett like are are filling as much time as they possibly can like i think we watch red skelton try to get on a horse for 10 minutes um mel blank shows up and does his Speedy Gonzalez type thing, which is no longer um, considered kosher, um, I would imagine. And it's it's very disconnected. Everything is very disconnected. So it felt kind of like a variety show, but this is 1949 and te television wasn't really a thing. But the other weird thing to me too, though, is like Red Skelton and Ricardo Montalban are both in this and both of them become TV actors 
or TV comedians in Red Skelton's case eventually. So it has these kind of like odd, I think it's it's from the future, but they put like reverse time was happening. So we have a movie from the 1949, the 1949, from 1949 that <laughs> reflects things that are to come. Um, yeah, so it's got, it, it like, was interesting to me in, in the way that it, it reminded me of later cynical cash and that, but that kind of, I wonder what her other movies are like, because she's a, she seemed to be acting fine. She didn't have a character to play. So, I mean, she was just kind of this crazy woman. So, you know, who can say about that? It didn't seem to do anything with her swimming, barely. So that wasn't the appeal. So it really reminded me of like a, a crappy movie that doesn't have the rock in it. Like it has Kurt Angle in it or something like that, you know, like, like <laughs> that kind of a thing where you. I wonder what he'd be like as an actor. Um, yeah, no. So if, may, if I may jump in here. Um, I, I have more to say, but I'm going to let you talk a little bit. Basically what all you're saying is true. That is kind of interesting. I think the amount of interesting and enjoyment you're getting out of it is disproportionate to how interesting I feel it is. <laughs> that being said, it, you know, we're, it, it's all subjective. Who cares? Uh, Mel Blanc, I didn't really know who Mel Blanc was before this movie. I think I had heard of him. Like I kind of knew of, of his, his, that like the guy who did Bugs Bunny was also the guy who did, you know, whatever and so on. And yeah, I remember watching Speedy Gonzalez cartoons as a kid. And I hadn't thought of Speedy Gonzales probably in like 20 or 25 years because I just, I don't know, it's not like it comes up very often anymore, except I probably in reference to how it's problematic because Mel Blanc was, I think, uh, I, I'm trying to like, just trying to figure out what, what his, where he comes from, but I think he's a Jewish guy from, from sort of European origin as far as I'm aware, but I could be wrong. Um, and like, it was interesting to see him and his character and it's like, that's problematic, certainly. And then, you know, Ricardo Montalban, who is actually um, of, I forget what his descent is, but he does have uh, Latin, you know, Latin He's heritage. From he was born in Mexico City. Right. And I think he had a career in Mexico, as far as I understand it, and is much more famous for later being Khan and Star mm -hmm. Trek stuff. And I haven't seen it. And I, I get it. Khan, I get it. I don't. <laughs> Anyways. He was also in uh, Fantasy Island and right. stuff yeah. like that. So he's, you know, a famous actor. So it's kind of interesting. It's like, there's all these little interesting pieces in this movie. This isn't, it's not a bad movie where like, it's got a, it's not like what, you know, a bad Roger Corman movie where it's kind of amusing and there's some interesting It's not ideas. Monster A-Go-Go. Is that what we need to say at this point? Yeah, it's not Monster A-Go-Go. Like, but it's also, I'm also trying to say it's not like good but enough. But it's not Robot Monster it's either. It's not Robot Monster. Yeah, it's like, it's not entertaining enough to really be a bad good movie. Like, I can't recommend this to like, you know, the red letter media crowd. Like, I <laughs> Right. This is, well, but this that's is... the funny thing because the, the red letter media, Mystery Science Theater, uh, how did this get made? I don't know how, well, how did this get made, does it? But I don't think Mystery Science Theater or Red Letter, like, ever do rom-coms. Like, when people think about bad movies, they don't tend to. Now, I know How Did This Get Made has done some, because they can be bonkers and amusing, but it's not usually, I'm not sure how much the bad movie crowd and the rom-com crowd really over overlaps. The, the, here's, here's my theory about that, and it, it is related to this, because, like, this movie is just bad and it's not, it wasn't that entertaining to me. I could see this being for a certain kind of crowd of like, wow, this is so silly. And, and it's so, there's so much problematic, not even just in the like stereotypes, but also in the relationships. Yeah. And it's got, like, yeah. It's, what is it? We were, we've been talking about like, you know, is bad representation better than no representation. And then there's like, you know, Ricardo Montalban, Jose O'Rourke is like the Latin lover stereotype. And it's like on its surface, like what's wrong with, you know, South American, Central American men being sexy. It's just, it's like the accent thing. Like in, in this movie that the accent is the joke a bunch and that's yeah. not good, you know? No. And, and again, it's, it's the only conversion you're seeing of a particular group. Right. It's, it's bad. And, so it's, anyways, and, he's, and he's South American. I mean, that's part of the problem is in yeah. the movie, he's South American. I, I, I'm North American. It doesn't really like, yeah, it's, no, it's, it doesn't, doesn't mean anything. anything. It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> um, shoot, I forgot where I was originally. Oh, Sorry. It's, it's, I... No, no, you're good. But so like, there's, I have this theory that basically 
action movies, sci-fi movies, and fantasy movies are the best bad good movies. And the reason for that is that those genres, like sci-fi movies tend to have interesting ideas, but when somebody really loses the logic in a sci-fi movie, it's a lot easier to like laugh about it and go big about it because it just makes no sense on such an epic scale. Fantasy, it's usually entertaining because it's just so raunchy and dumb. Like they make it as stupid as humanly possible. And action movies are often entertaining as bad movies because it's like these ridiculous setups to get to an action scene. Now, also male genres in general, sci-fi and fantasy, I guess sci-fi is, sci-fi is not really a male genre, but fantasy, at least the bad, good, the bad, bad movies. This is what they're considered. Yeah, like, so. You're being awfully heteronormative there. Right. I am being awfully heteronormative. <laughs> this, I'm talking about this in, in a broad sense. Anyway, yeah. so, so that's 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 like what you get for bad movies. But like there's some dramas that are like or rom-coms or any genre that could be bad. But it's just that when, when a couple is having problems, like it's not on such a grand scale where it's like amusing how like what out there they're going. And so Neptune's daughter like approaches that because it is just so ridiculous and so bad that shit about some of its stuff. But again, it's not like we're not in outer space. We're not fighting aliens. There's not like grander things to consider. So I could I, I could see this being, I could see there being a bad, good genre out there that isn't as fleshed out because, you know, a lot of the stuff we tend to watch seems to be heteronormatively male centered, but I don't know. Anyways, but, but this is all to say that I still don't remember most of this movie. Okay. I mean, I was going to kind of give you... I was going to give way a little more on this, but now I feel like fighting back just a little bit because I do remember now that How Did It Get Made did Safe Harbor, which is one of those Nick Sparks, I think, that they turned into, and it has Josh yeah. Duhamel and stuff in it. Yeah. And it's a different kind of funny, definitely, than like Robot Monster. Yeah. And, and I don't know who the audience really is, but if you like this kind of thing, like it is, it's, it's, it's offensive and and you know problematic and so on but there's just there's a nonsensicalness to the characters and what they're doing ricardo montalban or, or jose o'rourke keeps he's in love with a woman who thinks that he's sleeping with her sister and and this is clear like or dating her sister or whatever and this is not this is this isn't a big misunderstanding like she keeps accusing him of it he never seeks to solve the mystery of why this woman thinks he he's just like no i'm not like yeah so this in order to keep the conflict going but because of this i start to just view the whole movie from his point of view and i, I just want to say there was an amazing sequence in this movie of he um he hunts her down she's in a pool they don't seem to like each other well he's in love with her but i don't know why and she seems to hate him but somehow at the end of this five minute conversation she is moved to go talk to her noir voiceover business partner who's also in love with her and tell him that she is leaving tonight or tomorrow to marry jose and that she's giving up the business and changing her life entirely. And this has happened, even she's like, oh, some, everything changed in the last hour. She's just like, she's a little confused too. But her sister walks in and is like, I'm marrying Jose O'Rourke. And again, no one has bothered to clear up what's going on here so that this conflict can continue. There's also been a very aggressive thing with these flowers with her business partner, like, oh, right. like being mean Got to it. her for not immediately putting them in water. And then she goes to put them in water, but doesn't. So they never go in water. I mean, these are the things that, you know, capture me. So now Eve, Esther Williams, is furious because clearly... <laughs> Jose also is in love with her sister and engaged to her and again no effort to, she our our man Jose who is like thinks he's good now he's gold he's got the woman he loved to marry him like shows up at her door and she's like I hate you like never show up my my door again and slams the door on him and he's kind of maybe starting to wonder if he should figure out what's really going on when men run from an elevator and chloroform him and drag him off and i am like crying laughing at this point just like you would not believe the day this 
man has happened and i'm just crying laughing and i'm looking and you and our mother was watching with us are just kind of like <laughs> like not <laughs> interested but it was to me it was hysterical um and also the part where red skelton gets hit in the head with a croquet mallet and is clearly dead but he continues to <laughs> act throughout the whole film so i i it's it's got some special it's yes it's it's no mo robot monster but it's got some real it, it it takes me to that place of Gigi and Lily it's yeah. not as good as Gigi or Lily you have to watch Red Skelton try and get on a horse for 10 minutes and it's not funny but I, I it's got some stuff going for it and there's a few other scenes that are also wacky that I kind of enjoyed I, I think we've discovered something here, and it is I, it isn't it is a little heteronormative in my mind, but we're gonna branch out from it to <laughs> say that like, you know, red letter media and the bad good movies and MST through K, I feel like that came from a male place in general. Right. Let's move away from that. Everybody likes bad good movies, whatever genre, who cares? Right. But like rom coms and musicals and stuff like that, you don't necessarily get bad good bad good movies like that. You don't think of those necessarily in the same terms, I think. So what we've discovered is that like the Apple um which is by this which is the canon group or the yeah. canon films whatever yeah is, i mean the same group that did life force which is sci-fi but whatever uh but then there's also we did bus stop yes uh, i watched Gigi. i watched lily now we've got neptune's daughter which didn't work for me but you know what if this is your bad good movie <laughs> i'm now on board with that because you know what it totally Thank fits you. into, you're welcome it fits into that genre but we have to clarify that it's bad good and i it didn't work for me it's a little too uh, I don't know, something for me. It's a little too problematic. I couldn't quite get past all the problematic elements of it to enjoy it. So yeah. it didn't get there for me. But like, this goes into that bucket, which is why it's like, we need to open up our, our bad, good movie <laughs> to, to be you. more than what's on the, 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 the MST3K and Red Letter Media, because they're the big ones for it. We need to expand. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Well, like I said, How Did It Get Made, which is a podcast, they, they do cover, they've done the Apple, they've done they've done more yeah. stuff that's geared towards a feminine audience let's say yeah i only have one more thing to really say about this and i don't know if you have anything else to say because i, I mean, don't think i've said <laughs> i've said i haven't said a single thing about the actual movie other than it's terrible and i really don't have anything it's it the, is terrible the few interesting scenes are when esther williams swims and other than that have fun yeah i don't think this is like i'm i'm still curious about her movies like if like, I'd like to see one where she, she actually swim. It's just so weird. That is really where it makes me think of, like, they're trying to get you in the theater with her name, even yeah. though she's not in it as much as you'd expect her to be. And she doesn't swim as much as you'd expect her to be. Um, but, you know, this is an Academy Award winner, Theo. Yes, I am aware. <sighs> Why is it an Academy Award winner? The song, right? The best original song. Baby, it's cold outside, which has gotten a lot of internet flack in the last few years for perpetuating rape culture. Yeah. Um, I don't have anything too intelligent to contribute to that discussion. I didn't even know it as a song until the internet was upset about it. And this I, is where it comes from, for the record. This is where well, it, 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 it was written before and apparent. I, I tried to read an article about it and like, yeah, I can't. Yeah, it was written like five or 10 years before, but it did not become publicly a song until this movie. Right. And the way it is in this movie is like classic. Like it is uncomfortable because she really does want to leave. Um, Esther Williams character really does. Like the fact that this is a love story is kind of hysterical to me, but she doesn't want to leave and he's getting her to stay. And, it, and it's not this. Um, I've heard it argued that the original was more about the fact that as a woman, you're not allowed to stay. So this is kind of what she has to go through in order to, to appear virtuous, even though what she really wants is to stay with this guy. Right. Um, that's not it in the movie. In the movie, Esther Williams seems to really want to go. And he's like, no, you need to stay. And then it switches to where it's Red Skelton really wants to leave. And the sister character is making him stay. And I understand the comedy of that, but that doesn't age well, you know, and then he does leave and he remembers that it's actually his house. And it's, just, it's that like, now it's like, it's not, it's like granddad humor. It's like, yeah, well, what you're, what you're saying is it's is, playing with the gender norms of the time, 
yeah. but those gender norms are now outdated you know yeah. which is something we'll actually deal with in the next movie too um so it's 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 a it's it's a dated little piece. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say what you're what you're what you mean to say there is the whole movie is dated, like almost <laughs> every part of it. Like the, yes. the Technicolor is dated technically, although that can look really good for some movies. All the actors, you know, of course, dated if we really want to look at that. And then anything to do with the story or characters is dated. All of yeah. it. Uh, it's, it's, yeah. it's yeah, it's not a good rom com. I, I don't recommend it to people like go see. I happened one night, watch Ninochka, watch yeah. I Married a Witch, watch Lady Eve. <laughs> watch, if you want to watch a good rom-com, watch any of those. If you're like me and you have a weird thing for seeing the norms of heteronormative 40s and 50s society played out in a ridiculous way to modern sensibilities, like you, might get, you might end up cry laughing as Ricardo Montalban is pulled away. <laughs> Chloroformed, chloroformed and dragged into it we haven't even explained it. why he's being chloroformed it doesn't matter nothing it really doesn't it doesn't matter it that doesn't whole matter. plot is is so is so yeah well that's I, where I, the whole movie feels like like ten, like every every sub there's no plot there's only a bunch of subplots that don't connect to each other yeah i and again i've barely said anything about what actually happens in this movie because who cares yeah, I, it's I mean, somebody you care, I don't. Anyways, so uh, yeah, yeah I'm, I mean, I'm not, I'm not really recommending it, but I'm standing up for it just a tiny bit. <laughs> Excellent. 